Okay, so in this example, we're asked to sketch the graph of this car of these Cartesian equations, x equals cosine t and y equals sine t. And we're asked to do it between 0 and t is between 0 and 2 pi. Now, it doesn't say here, but we're also going to include the orientation of the curve. That means the direction in which the, the curve is moving. That's one nice thing about uh, parametric equations is it not only gives you a graph, a path that a particle is taken, but it gives you the direction in which the particle is traveling and it can tell you the, where the particle is located at any point in time. That's one nice advantage of parametric equations as opposed to Cartesian. So once we, get, once we graph this, we're then going to find the Cartesian equation that's equivalent to this graph. Okay, so to do this by hand, we got to pick values of t. Well, because t is 0 to 2 pi, I picked t values, I did increments of 90 degrees or pi over 2. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. If we we're going from 0 to pi, you might want to do increments of 45 degrees. 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, and so on up to, up to pi. All right, so to figure out the values when t is 0, we need to refer to the graph of sine and cosine. So the cosine of 0 is 1, so x is 1. The sine of 0 is 0. 90 degrees, x is cosine, which is 0. Y is sine, the sine of 90 is 1. Pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1. The sine of pi is 0. 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1, cosine is 0. And at 2 pi, sine is 0, cosine is 1. Now we can graph these by just plotting the points. And notice, as I plot these points that in, in the Cartesian, this is the car xy, we're plotting these in the xy coordinate plane, the Cartesian plane. So what we want to do here, so this is x is 1, negative 1, y is negative 1 and 1, keep track of the direction in which our points are plotted. So at our first point, when the time is 0, the particle is located at x is 1, y is 0. So at the very beginning, that's where our particle is located. 90 degrees, when the time is pi over 2, x is 0, y is 1. So we're moving in this direction. At pi, we, x is negative 1, y is 0. 3 pi over 2, x is 0, y is negative 1. And at 2 pi, we're back to 1, 0. So we can see as we plotted these, we went in, the, in this direction. So we connect these. The orientation we notate with these arrows. That's the direction. So we can see this is a circle. A circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. Well, we know the Cartesian equation for a circle centered at the origin with a radius as 1 is x squared plus y squared equals 1. But how do we get that from this? Let's say we didn't know that. Well, let me erase this. So what we want to do here first is square both sides of each equation. So when I do that, I get x squared equals cosine squared. And likewise, y squared equals sine squared. Well, now let's add the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of these two equations. We get x squared plus y squared equals cosine squared plus sine squared. But we know from our study here in trig, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, which is what we would expect because we, when we graph this by hand, we got our circle of radius 1. Now, this is much easier to do on your calculator. To do this on your calculator after you turn it on, uh, first go to the mode. 
make sure that you're in radians. I, I'm going to use radians. You could do degrees, but radians. Then the fourth row down, you see function, PAR, that's parametric, POL, and SEQ for sequence. We want PAR for parametric, so make sure that's highlighted. And then press Y equals. Now for X, type in cosine T. So we just type in, press cosine, press that, the X, T, theta, N button. Close the parentheses, we get cosine T. Press sine, and again, press the variable key, and we get cosine T and sine T. Now here, we want T to be between 0 and pi over 2. So what we want to do is press the window key, and T min is 0, T max is 2 pi. So for T max, type in 2, and second, and right here is our pi right above the caret key. So we get 2 pi. Let's just leave our step to be what my default is 0 0.13. And then let's do x minimum to be negative 2 and y minimum. x minimum to be negative 2, x max to be positive 2. Same for uh, y, negative 2 and positive 2. That will give us a big enough window to see the circle. Now notice, after we type that in, when we press graph, notice the direction in which the circle is graphed. Notice it starts here and it goes around counterclockwise, which is exactly what we would expect, because when we did it by hand, it went around this way. The graph does the same thing here on the calculator. It started at the point x is 1, y is 0, and if you looked at it after you press graph, it went around like this and it stopped right there. So that's how you, you can do these by hand and by using the graphing calculator.